Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Ace Games TV where today we're looking at the Green Fire Warlock questline on the 5.2 public test realms for World of Warcraft. Previously Metro did a video on the Green Fire and what it looked like. You can check that out in an annotation above or from looking back for our previous videos. But this particular video will be step by step instructions on how you too can get your Green Fire. Now we are told that in 5.2 we're going to have to fight for basically all of the rares on the Isle of Thunder. Metro also did a video on this previously which is also on the Ace Games channel and there will be a link somewhere on screen right now and in the description for that particular video as well teaching you of where you can go and camp these mobs. But anyway let's go on from that. Of course these rares drop all sorts of different things so other people will be after them but we are after the sealed tome of the lost legion. Now to unlock this tome to get rid of the demonic rune which is preventing you from starting the quest line you will need to create a health stone. Once you've created a health stone you simply right click on the quest item in your bag the sealed tome of the lost legion and the tomb will unlock with an explosion of fell energy. Once you have done so, the quest item turns into the Codex of Zarath in the tooltip. This is the book that will start the questline, and it reads, The tome appears to be written in an ornate sprawling script that seems to rise off of the pages. It vaguely resembles demonic, but the symbols are far more elaborate than any you have ever seen. Perhaps one of your demonic companions can tell you more. So once you start this quest, you'll be able to talk to your various demons. Now this is really cool, I really like this, and you will basically have to interrogate them, see what they know about each one. So obviously here I can ask my Wrath Guard, which is my supremacy spec uh, version of the Fell Guard, what he thinks of it. After talking with the majority of your demons, it soon comes to realise that the only one that understands this is your Voidwalker, or in my case, the Void Lord, which of course reveals the information we need, but it's in the demonic language. This leads on to the next part of the quest, which opens up the next quest, Reader for the Dreadtong. Return to your capital city and seek out a Warlock Trainer who may know more about this codex. So off we go to Orgrimmar. So here we are in Orgrimmar, we're in the Cleft of Shadow. Now obviously you can go to any of your Warlock Trainers, whether it be Undercity, Silvermoon or whatever, or if you're Alliance, obviously Stormwind, Ironforge, it doesn't matter. Just go to one of the trainers that you remember that's in Azeroth and you will be able to do this quest or at least hand it in and start off the next section. Now once you talk to this bloke, basically he tells you about the Legacy of the Masters. Now the Legacy of the Masters is essentially like a diary or journal of various warlocks who decided to band together. Um, well, I'm not really going to spoil it, you can read the book. Anyway, it involves you reading this book as completion of a quest. You obviously don't have to read every single page. You can just, just skip all the way to the end if you so desire, um, which I'm going to do right now. But uh, obviously reading this would be a seven or eight minute video on its own anyway so I'll let you do that. So the next part of a quest that you have to do now is follow in the footsteps of these individual warlocks. Now how do we do this you may be questioning. Well as a reward for the next quest we get a journal from Jubeka Shadowbreaker who's one of the original warlocks that joined along with Canafrad and a few other flavoursome characters of lore note that you can read up on in your own time. But essentially, once you start this quest, you're given this journal, and if you read it, it will disclose information as to where these people went in Outland. So, obviously, this involves going to Outland. So off we go. So let's hop through the Dark Portal, and here we are into Hellfire Peninsula, our first destination for retracing one of these shadow, uh, shadow shards, or whatever they're called, these crystals, basically, that foretell the memory of where these people have been in Outland and we need to collect them all. Uh, so instead of showing you a vague interpretation of where they could be, I'll just show you a collage of exactly their location and a map view of that location as well. But first, before we do this, I'd just like to introduce you to the mechanic if you still wish to not cheat. Uh, essentially, there's this hot-cold mechanic. Uh, if you get close to the target, i.e. the quest item, it will say hot, hotter and on fire, essentially, meaning you're directly on target and it should be below you, or it could be really cold, in which case you're probably in the twisting never and nowhere near the target. 
Anyway, so here we go. Here's the first crystal location in Hellfire Peninsula. This is located in the Felfire Ravine, or whatever it's called, where all those demons are, which is one of the first quests that you do at Thralmar. Uh, just here will be the orb in the middle of all these imps. Uh, obviously, these are low-level mobs, so they're not going to pose any threat to you at all and won't even aggro. Now, next up, we have the Neverstorm, which is a zone directly north of Hellfire, if you're not familiar with TVC content. And we're looking here for the next orb. Now, this orb does have an actual memory and an acted out little piece uh, with text here, so I'm going to let you look at that. There is no voice acting, so there's no point giving you any audio there at all. But we're going to look at that now, and uh, then we're going to move on to the next one, which will be in Blades Edge Mountains. Such strange creatures. Why do they remain so long after the Legion has left? There's a slight flaw in that supposition. Oh? The Observers were in the service of Illidan, not the Legion. Well, he's gone too. So why are they still around? How should I know? Well... I've spent weeks trying to understand how to summon one of these things. If you know something I don't, I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with us lesser mortals. What's the problem? You handled the binding of the Thalums and the Void Lords effortlessly. They were trivial by comparison. These things are never in the same place. There's something strange about them. Something out of place. Oh... <laughs> so there we go, there's my filling Blizzard shoes for a few seconds, trying to do my best there. My really terrible impressions uh, are probably not going to help this anyway, but I thought it'd be better than you just reading the text. Anyway, on to Blaze Edge Mountains, and the next location that we're looking for is actually here behind the mountain, at this rather cool looking pentagram on the floor that you may be familiar with if you leveled here in BC. I seem to remember this place quite well. Um, it was horrible, essentially, but uh, yeah, here we go, here's some more lore. I tire of your evasive babble, Doomguard. Explain to me why you and your kind are drawn to sacrificial magics. My contract is to fight for you, not to reveal the legion's secrets, mortal. Do not attempt to deceive me, demon. Your kind far predates Sargeras's betrayal. What were you? This knowledge is useless. What are you trying to achieve, Canafred? Stay out of this. The demon will answer. Now. What an odd demand. Not even my own kind care of our origins. Why should you? If you do not care, then there is no harm telling me. Before Sargeras freed us, we were the Titan's hounds, forever enslaved to police the use of arcane. Sacrificial magic was considered the greatest violation of life, and we were attuned to instantly punish those who delved in such delicious sorcery. You have your petty secret, Califrand. Now, I demand knowledge from you. Why do you care? I don't believe that is part of our contract. We are done here. Jebeka finished a ritual. Alright then, so the final stage and final fragment of these memories is actually at the Altar of Shadows in Shadowmoon Valley. This coincidentally is the same place that Gul'dan summoned the end of Draenor and the beginning of Outland. So here we are at the Altar of Shadows, the actual fragment is in the aisle here, very easy to find. And let's skip straight to the lore segment and then we're going on to the actual meat and potatoes of the questline. What is it that you wish to show me? I've seen the fear in your eyes, Jubeka. What? No, I... I have no idea... Gul'dan destroyed this world in his bid for power. You're concerned I will do the same to Azeroth. No, 
Stay back. You, you're dangerous. I remain content summoning demons. But you, you toy with becoming one yourself. There are two sides to the blade of demonology. The threats that besiege us from the outside. And those that threaten us from within. I chose you as my companion for a reason. And what depraved reason is that? If I fail, I need you to banish me. Forever. So there we go, we hand this quest in now. Uh, we've completed the outdoor section of the Warlock questline. From now on, we're going to be working within a scenario that was specially designed for this quest. So we are very lucky to have this uh, just for Warlocks. And we're going to show you how to get through this as easily as possible. And this starts the next section of questline for the scenario, Seek the Signal, which involves us going to the front gates of the Black Temple instance and basically finding the way that Canathrad got into the Black Temple in the first place. There's supposed to be some runes, so if we head over there now and we go to the gates, not the old entrance, don't get confused there. Uh, the entrance is actually boarded up. I believe that's supposed to be like a, a signifier that you're not going in that way. But instead we go to the front gates and we see a rune here. Now this rune can be interacted with and will actually cue you for your own solo scenario where you must complete um, the scenario to basically get the green fire as a reward at the end. Now this is not exactly an easy quest line or easy scenario by any means and I do actually admit I do not successfully complete this but I will tell you how you can. Ah, so here we are. This is personally my favorite raid aside from Old War that has ever been in this game and it brings shivers down my spine every time I walk into here through the sewer entrance, but here we are walking through the main gate, which I've never done before. Now essentially the various stages are fairly easy up until the two bosses that you'll be encountering in this instance. For the first stage, we're basically trying to get as far into the Black Temple as possible without getting seen. A lot of uh, Akama's um, Ash Tong Death Sworn people are here trying to clear up um, the instance and we're technically not supposed to be here. Now the way this works is there's a red circle around the field of view of the patrolling guards and we can actually attack a non uh, patrolling guard to basically cause a distraction and the mob will go over there instead of come to us. Now if we do get seen these mobs are extremely powerful and are obviously elite so we're not going to have much chance against them. So obviously stealth is the key here. So we'll just attack one, it acts as a distraction. There's about four or five of these uh, up until the main gate where Supremus would be, uh, just before the main entrance up here. Um, and then there's a couple inside as well where we meet up with a karma. Foolish warlocks, I knew you would try again to ransack our temple. Wait, you're not one of the warlocks that snuck in here before. Why then are you here? Uh, your name sounds familiar to me, Beoni. What do you want from the Black Temple? Stay a moment and speak with me rather than skulk about like a rogue. Warchief Garrosh seeks the Black Harvest members who trespassed here recently. Beoni, you and your horde did much to aid my people in freeing the Black Temple of Illidan's grasp. I will help you as the show of my mutual trust and repayment of the debt that I owe you. Akama, lead the way. Follow me. They visited both the Shrine of Lost Souls and the Temple Summit. I have decided to trust this warlock for now. Let her move about the temple freely. It will take many years for us to undo the damage that Magferidon, Illidan, and the Felorgs did to this holy place. Within lies the Shrine of Lost Souls. The souls of thousands of my fallen brethren remain within this area. Use caution. There are many traps still active within. Perhaps one of your demon spells will grant you the ability to scout ahead, 
before advancing forward. And of course, paying attention to what is said in these little speech bubbles is a fundamental key of succeeding in this entire scenario, pretty much. Now, Akama mentions there is a demon ability that you might try out. Maybe one of them will allow you to see things that you cannot ordinarily see. Now, let me just say, without this, it is extremely difficult. But Eye of Kilrog is possibly the coolest inclusion here, and maybe something you won't have thought of. So spoilers, but, well, there's not really many spoilers here, considering I'm showing you it in its entirety. But use your Eye of Kilrog and you will see these Shadow Traps. These Shadow Traps will basically, if you stand on them, summon very powerful elite versions of these ghosts, which will deck your face in. So obviously this is a, a great way of seeing what lies ahead. There is a path between them that you can only see whilst in this. So my advice is pop Eye of Kilrog, look where you're going ahead, cancel the buff and then those last few seconds whilst it uh, before it dissipates use that time to move between the slots and then we go to where the reliquary of souls boss used to be and this will be the first of two boss fights within this scenario and it's no pushover that's for sure this is amazing an untapped store of raw arcane energy for years it has languished slowly growing in strength. Imagine what we could summon with just a fraction of this power. Summon? <laughs> Imagine what we could become if fused with power of this magnitude. The powers of this room are not unlike the original Well of Eternity in Azeroth. So this is how Illidan bound so many demons to his will. Yes, the payment for the demon's service was to drink from the energy of this place. By feeding upon this place's power, they were broken free from their addiction to the Legion's magic. I believe this is the original power source he intended to offer the Blood Elves to free them from their addiction to the Sunwell. But for some reason, he didn't let them near it. What? You have no proof of such a claim. Didn't you notice? The demons under Illidan's command were free of the entropic fell-green corruption that pervades the Legion. Why do you talk so much, Canifred? I was there. At the end. Oh, dear. Are you going to regale me with yet another of your horrible stories? Shut up. I think I liked you better when your jaw was missing. D did you hear that? Those Ashtong dogs are coming. Let's hurry up and start the ritual. Very well. We will return later after the crystal is fully charged. So here we are, this is stage 5 after that bit of RP there. We have to defeat the Essence of Order in order to acquire the Empowered Soul Core, which is what they were actually waiting for originally. However, we're going to have to fight a boss to do this. Now this is a moderately difficult boss, to be perfectly honest. You're going to need things to keep you alive. So as a Warlock, we have quite a lot of things at our availability, such as obviously Health Stones. We can get Soul Link on the go, which means our health between our Demon and ourself are shared. We probably want um, one of the options, either Harvest Life for the adds which spawn to keep us alive uh, through harvesting those, which is what I'm going to be using on this fight but you could probably get um, one of the other options to be equally as safe but I prefer having that extra bit of AoE life drain at my disposal really the only thing you're going to have to worry about is a thing that you can interrupt uh, where she will do like a flame jet type mechanic uh, if this is again interruptible but it's all about using your own abilities to your own advantage and you shouldn't really have any problems at all. Now obviously I'm on my uh, my tune here which was copied to the PTR. Unfortunately this was before I got any real gear so I am in a few epics and uh, mainly offset stuff so if I can do it then you two can as well in 5.2 especially. 
Another major mechanic of this is her frontal sort of beam she puts on the floor of this fire. This again is very easily avoidable. I took a few hits in this, um, so there is some room for uh, obviously failing. But I really think that Harvest Life is the key to success here. Obviously, if you had Soul Link and, and other options are available. So anyway, we killed it. So let's move on to the next stage and we will show you the rest of the scenario up until the last boss. So stage six is essentially getting past uh, that trapped area that we came to uh, to get here. But now the traps have completely gone and they've been replaced with elite demons. Now this is where enslaved demon will come into hand. Uh, obviously this scenario is a lot like the legendary staff stuff. It makes you use whatever your class has available to it. So the next up on the list of being used will be banish and of course enslaved demon. Now all of these demons can be enslaved aside from the large ones, the very big doom guards or the succubi later on. They cannot be enslaved. But here we can enslave one of the fell guards for example, the wrath guard things and we can use that to our advantage. The goal here is simply to get back to where we left off uh, with a karma past all these demons. So in essence you could soul stone yourself and run past them, uh, die and simply res up. But uh, this is the other way. We can go down the left side here missing the majority of them and only having to deal with a couple of packs. Remember if your demon dies under your own slave you don't really have any diminishing returns on that. We can recast that on another demon. So that's how I would have done it and that's indeed how I did do it. But anyway, moving on to where we meet up with Akama for the last stage before the boss. Me only. Some of my men are trapped in the basement. There is little time. Help me save them. At this point you try to follow Akama only to be greeted by a fourth summoning of your imp. This imp has other ideas. Yo, Meoni, remember me? Good, good. Hey, listen, we don't have to help this guy. There's got to be some riches around this place. Come on, boss. You know you want to. Now it's at this point I get rather cynical. You have exactly five minutes to get from here through the den of mortal delights to where Mother Shiraz would be in terms of boss location, which involves going out and up those stairs and then past all of those mobs. Now all of those mobs are still in the game and they are raised to level 90 and many of them are elite. So you have two options here. A, you can either run there with soulstone, pray that you live long enough to get as far as you can, pop back up, sprint towards the chest, and loot it so within the time having about, I don't know, 50 seconds remaining. Or you can try and enslave demons and try and banish things along the way and completely run out of time. So obviously the first option is what you have to do currently. Now there is a big response thread, a feedback thread with Blue's responses to this and I imagine they're going to either increase the time limit or decrease the amount of mobs but as it stands in testing it was rather ridiculous. Now I did manage to do it for you guys um, but I won't be showing you that bit of footage since it took me so many attempts I was running out of hard drive space. So just saying what I had to do to do it was I used my rocket boots since I'm an engineer to rocket all the way up there, pulled all of the mobs, um, basically demonic leap towards the chest as fast as possible uh, and then actually died on the chest as I looted it um, after I'd looted it and then I ran back into the uh, to the instance where the timer had stopped and then I completed uh, stage seven. But supposedly you're going to have to loot things along the way, which is completely unrealistic. There's no way you can do that. At the moment it's just an unfair um, bit of running and I hope that it changes for live. So anyway, moving on to stage 8. Now this is the bread and butter uh, of the actual encounter. And this is also the part that I wasn't able to complete. But I will show you how you actually do it. I will give you a bit of a guided demonstration here. However, I was just not able to reach the uh, enrage timer at all. But uh, there's, there's a few ways, but I will show you them now. Now for this final stage, there are many sort of mini stages in between it, uh, mini phases. So we're defeating Canifrad Evenlock here in his full demon form. He comes out and has a big moan about you. Uh, after a little bit of RP, he will engage. 
Now, your basic guide to this is having preparation already up and running. So what we need to do is we need to obviously have health stones, we need to have our self buff already up here, and we also need to have various ways of getting out of line of sight of the boss. Now, there now, there are various pillars within this room which we can line of sight in with, and we can also use Demonic Gateway and Demonic Teleport to get out of line of sight of certain abilities. Now, those abilities that we will need to line of sight are Chaos Bolt mainly, and everything else needs to be either interrupted or healed through. Now, obviously, choices in the talent tree will be really important here. I went with Dark Bargain, uh, simply because that absorption is is kind of fundamental to my survivability. Um, you might want to have uh, Harvest Life because of the Imp stage. There are various things that you can change, and it's all dependent on your playstyle. And many people have made YouTube videos where they've succeeded in using many of those different options. But as it stands, this is what you do from the start and this is how I was doing it anyway, how I was told to do it. The first major mechanic is after he lets you wail on him a little bit, he summons a Pit Lord. Now this Pit Lord can be enslaved off a of bat, so that's what we want to do. Now you will incur the stun at the start, unfortunately, which does an insane amount of damage. It is random what damage that will do to you. I've been killed twice by this on occasion, and uh, it's very RNG based. But uh, and then we get our end slave off, and then we use that against him. So we're using his own demon against him. This demon also have a, has a stun ability, which we can use to interrupt various uh, abilities, namely of which we're going to be interrupting Cataclysm, which is one of the abilities uh, that will one-shot you if you do not either outrange it, which covers the entire room, so you'd have to go to the stairs of the uh, of this particular boss room to evade it, or just interrupted with the ability on the boss. Now, unfortunately, I don't have much footage of the other stages. Like I said, my hard drive was running out of space, but I will describe what happens. If you do make it past this stage and the demon uh, essentially gets damaged a bit more, he will summon Fell Imps. Now, these imps are aweable. They will hurt you a lot, but of course you can use the Pit Lord here. It has a, a very powerful Flame Breath ability, uh, which can be used to kill them rather easily. That's not really the hard part. Uh, after that stage we get him a little bit lower, the demon, uh, the boss rather, and then he will summon fell hounds. Now these fell hounds have the ability to basically eat off uh, your enslave of the pit lord. If this happens you will remove it will basically have no enslave up on the pit lord and you can die very quickly to that as well so you want to get your end slave back on as soon as possible you don't want to get hit by the um by the fell hounds themselves either they hit like a truck um, then after that basically if you survive that long you will have a doom guard now the doom guard as well can be banished and that's what you need to do a lot of people have tried to survive it um, the doom bolts and stuff but they will kill you instantly uh, just banish that and use what you have remaining to kill the boss now that's how it's supposed to be however the constraints are quite clear there's quite a confined little uh, curse of doom that he puts on you which basically gives the fight an enrage of seven minutes now Apart from line of sighting, using the various mechanics that we have available to us as warlocks, which are obviously demonic uh, teleports, demonic gateways, and stuff like that, and various spec benefits, the enrage timer is still very, very close, um, and is very close because um, the majority of people that have done this and have reported that they have done this on the feedback thread basically have been in the full uh, tier 15 stuff from the vendor that you can purchase. And not only is that an issue, but also the fact that what about casual players? What if a casual player was to basically acquire the Codex of Zaraf and do all of this questline up until that point? How would they then complete it? I know that there is a prestige gain from that, and there's not going to be many Warlocks with that, uh, with the green fire at all to begin with. Um, but the problem is, it, it's a bit of a dick tease to let them have the ability to acquire it in the first place, let alone realize how hard it is later on. You know, they may as well not have bothered uh, at all. But that's not really the concern. The seven minute enrage timer is close even for me, and I'm, you know, I'm a raider. I may not be the best at my class, but I would like to think that stuff like this would, would work. Even if I got the mechanics off perfectly, the enrage timer is still ticking away. You know, I could get this to 10% and then get obliterated. 
um, because I can get it to 10% in seven minutes, you know. Um, the various mechanics in between are kind of trivial once you get them down, like the various, you know, CCs and stuff, but you just don't have enough time to put uh, the, the amount of DPS that's required of this on the boss as well as deal with everything else. And recently they said they're going to buff the health of the boss by 10%, and no one has killed it since. Not a sausage. So that just goes to show that uh, some changes don't need to be made. This certainly does not need to be buffed, in my opinion. But then again, that's my opinion. Tell me what you guys think. Unfortunately, I know this video has taken a turn for the worst towards the end. I've not been able to get footage of those uh, last stages, or rather a kill uh, in completion. However, I do intend to revisit in the future and show you guys that anyway. But if you do want to see that, there are a few videos before the buffs were put in place uh, that clearly show the kill um, before the buffs and uh, what, it, what it was like. But um, let me know what you think in the comment section below on, on how hard you think stuff like this should be. Now, bear in mind this is about 20 times harder than the Legendary Snaff, uh, which I did actually do. I am, you know, I, I was capable of doing that. It took me many hours, and I enjoyed it. However, stuff like this, this may be possibly the hardest thing in the game, uh, let alone anything else. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Anyway, thank you for watching my video. I'm sorry about the end. I will get a kill when this is actually soloable. Um, and uh, thank you for watching my video. I will definitely see you next time. Be sure to subscribe to Ace Games TV for more WoW content and other games content weekly from myself, Metro, and the rest of the team. See you later.